Heplink's new Transit Pro dual modem cellular router is here, and it's the first full redesign of the Transit series since it came out. Come along with us and we'll tell you all about it. So we're super excited about this router. I know we tell you guys a lot of times we're excited, but this is the first router in, I don't know, three plus years that I've actually uh, taken apart my own personal RV to install before I did the filming. So I had to take it all back apart just to do this video for you guys. So this is a big deal router in the evolution of Peplink's Transit series that we've been using in our Ultimate Road Warrior series and also just for folks that want to buy the modem on its own without the roof antenna. Now, Peplink has gotten some flack from folks in the past for their kind of naming conventions. There's some names of products that kind of overlap each other. And if any of you guys follow our channel, you will have known that a few months ago they released the Transit Pro E, and that actually is on the previous generation Transit chassis, while this Transit Pro is on the new generation. Uh, it can get confusing, folks, but, you know, just to keep it simple, we think that Peplink is just trying to standardize their naming convention going forward for 2022, and they really want to keep the Transit Pro line uh, to designate sort of their, you know, higher-end portable and also potentially kind of slimmer or smaller form factor, and we'll get into that a little bit more. But this is called the Transit Pro, new for 2022. So folks may be wondering, is this a dual modem device since they don't call it a Transit Pro Duo? The answer is yes, it is dual modem. And they've done some interesting upgrades to the modems that we're gonna tell you about shortly. So cutting to the chase really early on, just to give you a high level feature differentiator, a uh, couple things. First, this new chassis has an upgraded processor, and that means faster router throughput on the back end of this device. Uh, we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute, but just at a high level to start one gigabit max throughput up from 400 megabits in the previous model. So a significant jump in the back end speed of the processor that handles everything inside of this device. Next, they've upgraded this device to include Wi-Fi 6 technology. We'll talk about that as well in a minute. And the kind of the biggest breakthrough besides the processor increase, which is a huge one, is that they've changed out the modems that were common in our duos for a, uh, a little bit of a different combination of modems to give you wider compatibility across the carriers in the United States. The previous generation duo had dual category 12 modems, and that performed very well on AT&T and Verizon, and also pretty well on T-Mobile, but it did lack certain bands, specifically band 71 on T-Mobile, so it was a challenge for our customers to get access to a dual modem device so they could use more than one carrier at a time and also get access to band 71, which is super important with T-Mobile. Now to help customers with broader compatibility, what Peplink has done is they've changed out the category 12 modem in the previous generations in this single slot, uh, basically modem one here on the left for a category seven modem. And you might be thinking to yourself, category seven is lower than 12, that must be worse. Actually, category seven modems are newer than category 12 modems. And they were released after category six and after category 12, we won't get into all that crazy, but essentially they were released to add additional bands that US carriers were supporting. The big one being that band 71 on T-Mobile. The category seven modem in here supports all of the major bands for Verizon as well. So if you're not looking at T-Mobile, you can pop Verizon in that category seven modem and get access to all the bands that they're using in the LTE spectrum. Moving on to modem two, that category 12 modem, that one gives you support for band 29 and band 30, which are used on the AT&T network. So we recommend that you pop uh, Verizon or T-Mobile into that first slot. And in the second slot, we recommend you use AT&T if you're looking to round out the carriers. Each of these modems has two slots. So there's a four slot total here. Uh, that we'll get into a bit more when we're going in the overview. But essentially what this means is each modem has the ability to switch from slot A or slot B at the press of a button in the management console, giving you a ton of flexibility. 
Now that's just a recommendation based on a snapshot in time right now for which modems would be best for each carrier, but you can always look at a full list of the bands supported for each modem by going over to our website and clicking the documentation tab where you'll see a PDF with all of the specifications or bands, or you can click out click on the detailed analysis tab where you will be linked over to our friends at the Mobile Internet Resource Center and they have gear guides and detailed analysis on all Peplink products that are kind of popular in the mobile internet space and this one will be included as well. A ton of the information at the Mobile Internet Resource Center is provided free of charge and is available to the public. They are member funded through a membership community and if you're interested in possibly picking up this modem, make sure you check out the membership tab at mobilemusthave.com. All of our memberships will give you deep discounts on products like this as well as access to the Mobile Internet Resource Center. Before we get into the unboxing and all the additional features, we do want to mention that this is a prime care device. And what that means is that it includes uh, licensing for Speed Fusion and the ability to use Speed Fusion Cloud all included with your purchase. And that includes Speed Fusion Cloud access for one year with one terabyte of data. Now, if you're new to mobile internet, you don't know what that is, that's okay. But just keeping it high level, if you're gonna have two cellular providers and you wanna operate them at the same time, say T-Mobile and AT&T or Verizon, this modem gives you the ability to combine those connections into one single connection that can give you a lot more redundancy and resiliency on your internet connection. So if you're looking at absolute reliability for mobile work or just ultimate flexibility for mobile play, this is an absolute top pick for us as of 2022. All right, so let's talk about what's in the box. It looks so much like the previous generation Transit, um, as you can see here in the photos. But giving you uh, a high level, you've got your four cellular antennas. Two of those are for modem one, and two of those are for modem two. You've got your two Wi-Fi antennas. Those are the longer ones. And just for folks to know, you can check on the antenna itself. It does say Wi-Fi on those antennas. And the center pin is reversed for Wi-Fi and cellular when you're hooking these up. So just make sure to check on that center pin. You have your GPS antenna included as well, and you have a AC power adapter, as well as um, some mounting ear brackets. And we also have the screws here from the dust cover that include that is included that covers your SIM card slots if you wanna cover them up after you install the SIMs. Lastly, Peplink is uh, adding in some uh, wire management in their signature orange, which is quite nice uh, with their logo on it as well to keep things nice and tidy. One noticeable change from the previous generation Transit is the AC adapter now has that four pin Molex connector. They've moved away from the DC barrel connector. We'll get into power options and how to wire this as well as how to direct wire this in a minute. Before we move on from the unboxing, we want to show you one additional thing. Uh, these devices typically come with a small ground screw here located in the center uh, screw holes here, and that can trip up a lot of customers. Now, as you can tell, this entire device is one big metal case. Um, so you can move this ground screw anywhere and still achieve the same grounding results. But um, typically, if you're in an RV and you're riding on rubber, you're not typically grounding this to the chassis anyway. Um, so for the most part, that's not necessarily really needed. Um, but if you remove those ground screws or relocate them to one of the other holes, you can take your installation ears here, your mounting brackets, and you can mount them there on the center, as you can see here, using the supplied screws. A lot of people get tripped up because they think they have to put the ears on opposite sides or both in the front, and it can make the modem kind of floppy if you're installing it on a wall. So we like to tell folks, or we're starting to tell folks in these videos, to go ahead and just mount those brackets in the middle so it's nice and balanced and easy to install on uh, your installation location. Giving you an overview of the device itself, here we've got on the front side, we've got our green uh, DC terminal port. Uh, down below, we've moved from micro USB power inputs here for portable power packs, and we'll talk about that in a minute, to USB-C ports. That's a nice uh, upgraded touch. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we've got our four pin uh, Molex connector here for our DC input using the AC adapter or using our optional DC direct wire kit that is fused uh, exclusive with mobilemusthave.com if you want to uh, go ahead and direct wire via the four pin Molex connector. Then we've got a WAN port 
for ha adding a uh, additional internet source. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then we've got a LAN port for connecting a local device like a desktop computer. As with all Peplink devices, our WAN port is a signable, so we can move that from a WAN port to a second LAN port if you wanna connect more local devices via an ethernet cable. We have our standard complement of lights on this device, our status light, which will be red when it's booting up or if there's a problem and typically just solid green and our cellular lights that will blink uh, green when the modem is attempting to connect or be solid green when the modem is connected. And we've got that for both cellular modem one and cellular modem two. We have our reset port here. Uh, designated by an arrow with a circle uh, that is for hard resetting the device if you forget your password or if you want to restore everything to factory defaults. We have guides on how to do that, not that you normally would, but they are available at guides.mobilemusthave.com. Before we move on to the other side, you may notice that this green terminal port looks a little different, and that's because, like I said before, I took this modem out of my setup. So this typically normally has a plug uh, attached to it, which I'll show you here in a picture, and there are screw down uh, terminals at the top allowing you to screw down a direct wire kit. Now with mobilemusthave.com, we are including the four pin Molex connector in our direct wire kits because it's just easier to set up a four pin power connector than having to use a direct wire kit and figure out which of these ports are power input. Now, since we're in the video, we'll go ahead and tell you that VCC is your 12 volt positive and G and D is your 12 volt negative. Everything else here is for machine to machine communication and can be disregarded if you're just trying to get on the internet. Moving on to the other side of the device, this looks almost identical to the previous Transit series or Transit Duo, I should say. Uh, so you've got your cellular uh, modem one, antenna port one and two, your GPS in the center, and your cellular modem two, antenna one and two here. Down below you have your Wi-Fi ports, Wi-Fi A and B. And again, this is the upgraded Wi-Fi six technology, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, one distinct change is that they have moved away from the full size, full size SIM cards in this modem. This accepts the nano SIM cards. And I'll click on one and just show you. That's that nice little tiny SIM card. So um, for if you're purchasing from a must have, Dot com any data plans, um, you're covered because we ship all of our SIMs in tri-cut SIMs. But uh, just note that that is going to require a nano SIM card. But you can pick up extra SIM cards from us, uh, either to use with our plans, which we ship SIMs included, or if you have a direct plan, you can purchase SIM cards from us with this purchase. As with all Peplink devices, when you insert your SIM card, you're gonna have that small little notch there uh, that's going to go into the device first and the metal there from the actual chip is always going to face the other slot. So if you're installing this in uh, slot A at the top, the metal will point down. And if you're installing this in slot B at the bottom, the metal will point up. And these are all spring loaded slots. So if you go ahead and press those in, it will click and the SIM is installed properly and nearly flush. If you're interested in removing it, simply press it again and it will pop out so, so that you can remove it. All right, so let's go ahead and deep dive a little bit into these modems. Uh, as we said before, we've got a category seven modem in slot uh, one here in modem one position. Now, category seven modems have a max download uh, capability, theoretical max of 300 megabits per second, and a max upload speed of 150 megabits per second. And if you ever knew anything about category six, you'll know that that upload speed is significantly increased, as is that download speed. But it is less than category 12, so we want to kind of tell customers not to worry tremendously about that. That max the theoretical speed of 300 megabits is a lot, and it's going to get you plenty of performance uh, in a device. Yes, you can look at a category 20 or a, or a 5G category 20 device that will outperform this on a single modem basis, but you're gonna lose out on that dual modem capability unless you step up to like the MBX mini uh, device, which we do have and we do sell, but those are uh, quite a bit pricier, north of $5,000. So this is really a exceptional value uh, if you're looking at a dual modem device and 300 megabits is 
more speed than the carrier is typically going to give you in just about every location. The Category 7 modem is a very versatile modem. It's exceptionally well balanced for the US market. So you're covered pretty much 100% in T-Mobile as of today's date, and the same as Verizon. And with AT&T even, that modem will work fine, but if you've got that Category 12 right next to it, unless you're planning on using two AT&T SIMs, we recommend that you pop your AT&T into modem two, which we'll get into in a minute. But yeah, tons of support in the Category 7 for just about all of the carriers. Moving on to modem two, we've got that category 12 modem and that has the max download speed of 600 megabits per second and max upload speed of 150 megabits per second. Again, plenty fast. Now in this modem, we're covered for all of the major LTE bands for uh, Verizon. And again, all of the major bands or all of the bands for AT&T as well. Um, conversely, you can put T-Mobile in this uh, slot as well. You're just Again, not going to have access to band 71, which can be important uh, for, this, for this modem. Both of the modems support uh, the popular bands that T-Mobile is using uh, as their result of the Sprint merger, so you're covered with uh, those as well. Again, this is an overview video. If you want detailed specifications, make sure to hop over to the listing page, click the documentation tab, or the independent analysis tab, where we'll dive quite a bit deeper with the Mobile Internet Resource Center into this product. All right, so let's move on to Wi-Fi 6. Now, all of the previous transits uh, had Wi-Fi 5 technology, which was fine. Uh, it was working pretty well, but Wi-Fi 6 is a newer technology. And to keep it high level, again, since this is an overview video, why do you care about Wi-Fi 6? Well, it tends to perform better in higher density environments where there's a lot of Wi-Fi congestion, like an RV park, uh, so that's very helpful. Um, and it can, with certain newer devices, like newer iPhones or newer Android devices, also help with the battery life on your devices if they're connected to the Wi-Fi. It's a bit more of an efficient chipset. It does have some faster max download and upload speeds as well. Uh, so overall, Wi-Fi 6 is really where the technology is going, so we're really happy they included it here. The Wi-Fi 6 chipset inside this device supports both 2 gigahertz long range Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz high speed Wi-Fi. Um, to give you a kind of a high level overview, 2 gigahertz, like I said, is typically longer range, but can be a slower speed. It also can suffer a bit more for, from congestion in RV parks. Uh, and 5 gigahertz has shorter range, but faster speeds. Uh, we recommend that you set up your Wi-Fi in these devices according to our Wi-Fi best practices setup guide. Again, available at guides.mobilemusthave.com. And we recommend you split out the 2 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi um, by default, it's set to auto and the device will just decide for you. And we recommend you turn that off and set up in accordance with our best practices, just so you can connect to the network that's best suited for the application that you're trying to use. As with all transit series modems, this device has a built-in Wi-Fi controller, meaning that it can control external peplink access points very easily through a central administration console. So it's honestly as simple as checking a box saying enable wireless access point, plugging in a peplink device via the LAN port, and boom, you're off to the races. It'll automatically provision that device and start using it based on the configurations of the primary device. It supports a lot of access points. Uh, I believe it's 25 plus, but you know, most people aren't going to put that many in, so you're covered from an access point perspective. And it also supports wireless mesh or wireless uplink. We have detailed guides on all of that at guides.mobilemusthave.com if you're interested in setting that up post-purchase. This device is available on mobilemusthave.com and can be paired with our MMH wireless data plans that run on the major carrier networks. So you can pick up a data plan for that Category 7 or that Category 12 modem or for both modems through us and none of those have contracts and each come with different terms and conditions. So if you're interested in a data plan, you can bundle them at purchase purchase, or you can just go to data plans, which is a drop down on mobile internet and check out all the details there. So let's talk about max router throughput and kind of why that matters. Now in the previous generation transits, we had a max throughput of 400 megabits per second on the router side. But if you dug a little deeper and you were thinking about using speed fusion to connect multiple cellular connections or multiple internet connections together, that number dropped 
quite quite a bit. Uh, if you were using unencrypted uh, traffic, you could get a max of 100 megabits per second. And if you were going to encrypt, which you are required to do with Speed Fusion Cloud, it was dropped to 50 megabits per second. So what that basically meant is the max speed you could see out of Speed Fusion Cloud on those devices was 50 megabits per second. Now that's plenty of speed. So if you have one of the previous generation duos. It's fine. Uh, you know, Zoom's going to use 1.5 megabits. If you can get 50 megabits down, you're doing plenty fine. But it is a noticeable upgrade in the new Transit Pro. The Transit Pro with that one gigabit max throughput is going to give us a max uh, throughput unencrypted on Speed Fusion of 400 megabits per second. And if we go ahead and encrypt that traffic uh, with like Speed Fusion Cloud, we're going to get 200 megabits per second. So a 4x improvement in Speed Fusion Cloud. Now, obviously, that's all very dependent on your cellular providers or whatever you're using as an internet source, but it's typically going to include cellular. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean the modem is going to magically give you those speeds. You're still dependent on what the cell towers can't give you. So if those cellular providers are not giving you that 400 megabit for those really super fast speeds, why does it matter to have a router with a faster throughput? Well, one of the main reasons is this WAN port here. Here. Now, if you're a customer who may potentially be looking to future-proof with stuff like Starlink or even a wired internet solution at a uh, campground, we know a lot of folks that own sites and they have cable modems or other wired solutions, those can be plugged into the WAN port and they can be combined via speed fusion with the cellular modems in this device. So if we're starting to look at Starlink that's you know promising speeds north of 100 megabits, we'll see how that really plays out as it becomes more available and more, more and more people start using it. But regardless, if we're seeing faster speeds both from that and from the cellular providers as they beef up these networks, that faster throughput is going to matter as you start to combine multiple connections. So it's a big deal. For some of our power users that usually don't do this until stage two, you can actually plug another Peplink device into this WAN port. It's definitely an advanced configuration, but you can do it. Um, and that's what a lot of folks are doing who want to experience or experiment with 5G. So you can plug a 5G Peplink into this WAN port and then utilize those ultra fast onboard um, modems as well for a three modem setup which can be really, really solid when this is your central command center because of that higher router throughput. So this is really what we're recommending as our top pick for your kind of first initial buy because you can upgrade or expand whether it's with access points or additional routers with this device and it comes in at a very attractive price point. As mentioned before, if you're interested in possibly um, you know, picking up one of these devices and experimenting with Speed Fusion Cloud, etc. We have a plethora of guides available at guides.mobilemusthave.com. Those are available to the public, but we do kind of ask folks that, hey, if you're going to use one of our guides and we're helping you out on how to configure some of these advanced products, why not pick them up from us as well? We appreciate the support. It's what funds us to do these fun videos for you guys. The Transit Pro is included in our new Ultimate Road Warrior VR2 mobile internet bundle. Mobile internet bundles include this mobile router, uh, or a different one depending on the bundle you choose, a direct wire DC power cable that's fused for a direct wire installation on your 12 volt house batteries, either marine or um, in an RV, and that can go up to 24 volts if needed, if that is applicable for your application. And it also includes a roof antenna, um, and there's a bunch of different roof antennas to choose from. And if you look under the bundle uh, guides, you'll see a roof antenna selection guide if you scroll down, if you're not sure which roof antenna you want to pick. But the biggest, most kind of exciting part about bundles is that they are bundled at a discount. So you get a discount on if you were to purchase these individually, um, but you can stack that discount. So if you're looking at our mobile must have insider membership program, the membership discounts stack on top of the bundle discounts. And that can typically mean that you're going to pay for the entire membership fee uh, within your first purchase and also get yourself access to the mobile internet resource center so that you can stay up to date on all things mobile internet and get help uh, from us in our advanced support forums on the higher end features of devices like this that we don't typically cover as part of just complimentary support for purchase. 
Discounts go even further if you're looking at the mobile must-have wireless plans because we provide monthly discounts to all members and they combine. So if you're looking at multiple uh, wireless plans for a device like this where you need two plans, you can get a bundle discount uh, for two plans and then a member discount on top of that as well as your purchase discount. So it adds up really fast. Complete details are on our membership are available at membership.mobilemusthave.com and the discounts vary depending on the membership tier you're looking at. All right, everyone, that concludes our overview of the brand new Max Transit Pro. My wife is eager to get this back installed in our rig so she can get back on the internet and do some calls for work this afternoon. But if you have any questions, make sure to go over to mobilemusthave.com and click on the chat button and we have agents available to chat from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, or you can always drop us an email at info at mobilemusthave.com. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the road. Thank you.